And also, Across. you're supposed to slow down and stop at an ambo, not speed up and go. No, do you want to fight, bruh? Yeah, fight. Do you want to fight? Yeah. Huh? Let's see what he does. My nails are gritty now. I can fuck you up. Is he drinking? Is he drinking like Bravia or something? <laughs> what? He's drinking something. It looks like a beer bottle. Uh, oh no! <laughs> it's shade there, but it's in between two other cars because we're going to get hot. Yeah. We're gonna get hot. Okay, let's go. So you are watching What the Fluff, mm -mm -mm. episode two, season two, <laughs> and this Shabam, is Shabam. our second Attempt? episode <laughs> of What the Fluff Car Cars. Woo! We got a security guard to the left. I know. I just noticed. So if he comes to say hi, we kind of have to explain that we're not drinking actual alcohol. Hmm. We're drinking fruit juice in the car. That's very true. Actually, these <laughs> bottles are quite suspect. Yes. He's just getting closer and closer. closer. <laughs> and he's trying to be suspicious. No, we're the ones who're suspicious. <laughs> he's trying to be subtle. <laughs> right. Like I want to have a sip, but it just it like. What, like, what what is he gonna do? Ask us to leave a parking lot? <laughs> We're drinking apple juice? Bit no grape juice? Bitch, I wanna talk to your manager. Uh, mm. Today I have some fun stories planned that should hopefully make you go WTF. Okay. Yes. And you guys, obviously, because that's why we do the show. I have a bit of a I mm. suppose it could be seen as a bit of an elitist question. Ooh. But that'll come out a little bit later. Remember how last week we were you were talking about it? Yes. And as all of our fans, our oh, subscribers. There he goes. There he goes. <laughs> Tam's new best friend, guys. You really like horror, right? Yes, I so do. So we're gonna do a quick fire round of some did you know facts just to see if you know these facts. Because the title of this BuzzFeed article is 18 Insane and Creepy Movie Facts You Probably Didn't Know Until Now. Okay. So hit me with it. The corpses in the rainy poltergeist pool scene were real skeletons. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. The cast and crew of the 2005 Amityville Horror kept waking up inexplicably at 3:15 a.m. while filming, which is the same time Ryan Reynolds' character mysteriously wakes up every night in the film. I didn't know that one. Okay. In Candyman, Tony Todd had to fill his mouth with real bees. Yes, I knew that one. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> After the first day of filming, The Conjuring, Vera Farmiga, mm -hmm. I apologize for the mispronunciation. Her little sister is in American Horror Story. Oh, cute. Vera found three unexplained claw marks on her skin. No, I didn't know that one. Shelley Duvall, who yes. played Wendy Torrance in The Shining, said the amount of emotional distress from filming was excruciating and unbearable. That's not a creepy fact. That's life on set. I did know that, but I think that's more working with Stanley Kubrick. Do we need to, like, stop this... the sun? <laughs> you want to stop the sun? <laughs> Can somebody just, just turn off the sun, please? No. You want to move? Okay. There's some shade over there. You can go there. Hold my drink. Okay, girl. During the chest burster scene in Alien, yeah. the actors didn't know what was about to happen, so their absolutely horrified reactions are real. I didn't know that. Eli Roth got the idea for Hostel after coming across a Thai website about murder vacations where people could pay to torture and kill people. I didn't know that. I didn't know that was real. The actor who played the radiologist's assistant in The Exorcist was a convicted murderer who dismembered and killed gay men in the late 70s. What? Holy shit. No wonder that set was like cursed. Yeah. The creepy possessed Annabelle doll from The Conjuring is based off a real possessed yes. Raggedy Ann doll. Yes. Side track. Uh -huh. Like, 
Obviously, Which we're the, known for. the movie makes it out to be like this really like creepy porcelain doll, which are some of the creepiest dolls. It's not. It's not. In the world. Because I heard the whole Annabelle legend before the, the Conjuring and like all the movies came out. And mm. I looked that up. And obviously from deep diving on YouTube, finding all these like creepy, <laughs> creepy shit. Looked it up being like, oh my goodness, this is insane. Creepy mm. dolls are like my crack. And I looked it up and it's a rag doll. It's and apparently a raggedy and doll, yeah. Apparently, like one of the worst incidents that happened with this doll is what it actually attacked someone. I was like, bitch, I'm just gonna set you on fire. Like The schoolhouse in Hitchcock Hitchcock's The Birds is a real life haunted house and its current residents say they hear footsteps and children laughing. Uh out. Move out. <laughs> right, who stays there? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre set was filled with 500 pounds of decomposing animal corpses and the stench mixed with the heat caused the actors to vomit continuously. Yep. <laughs> what the fuck? During filming of the 2005 version of the Amn Amnityville Horror, a dead body was found floating in the water near set. <laughs> Wow. Multiple actors from the Poltergeist movie died tragically either during or after filming. Yes. Why? Why do people get involved with this? <laughs> because it's fun. That's what you get for fucking with freaky shit. That's what you get for having real bodies on set. Yes. Okay? Like, that just invites bad juju. Bad juju. Bad juju. <laughs> like, police in Colorado Springs are looking for a female jogger who re who regularly poops outside people's homes. What? She's been dubbed the mad pooper. The mad pooper. They, they missed, missed an opportunity there. They could, have, <laughs> they could have called her the mad chatter. Come on! That's the real tragedy of the story, guys. So residents of this neighborhood have like pictures and video of this woman jogging in full jogging gear, defecating outside of their houses. Police have obviously opened a case and she'll be charged with defecation of character. I'm out. Goodbye. <laughs> so yeah, so she'll be charged with urination and defecation in public as per city court, like city ordinance. They've literally called her the unidentified perpetrator. <laughs> so it's just something I noticed. That. Oh, I love it. I love it when you do this to me, yeah? <laughs> this is something I noticed. We're old and we're dying. Thanks, Tam. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you literally did that to me in one episode. I was so unprepared. <laughs> and then I'm sitting there going, oh, wow, I'm so close to death. <laughs> well, you know. It's and then it just creep. plateaus. Thanks. Thanks, Tam. Up on you. This is not a new topic, but... Is this the same security guy? Uh, it's the same guy. Okay, so he's wearing a beanie now. Again. It's not a new topic, and it is something that does get discussed. Uh-huh, discussed. As opposed to discussed. Uh-huh. Quite a bit. But what do you feel? How do you feel? Or what do you think about? Mm -hmm. Because obviously the new H&M just opened up at Cavendish. Yes! I have yet to be, but okay. I hear it's great. And I went in... And apart from the fact that guys have, like, no exciting choices. Guys never have had exciting like, choices. Like, the most exciting choices they have on t-shirts now mm. is band shirts. There was literally, like, Metallica and Guns N' Roses shirts. At H&M. At H&M. And I know in Cotton On, I've seen Def Leppard as well. And Remember Aerosmith. when JJ's used to do that? Yeah. And then everyone would be like, oh, you don't even know who ACDC is. And I'm like... And ACDC and Aerosmith. Like, yes. they, they have those. What I wanted to know is, what do you think about these r retail chains mm -hmm. selling the, these things like, like band mm -hmm. merch? Like I think Metallica it's great. and Guns N' Roses and stuff. I think it's great. Being a broke-ass metalhead, right, in this country... Where there was literally a time where you could only get authentic band shirts from a place in Pardon Island. I'm just going to name it The Hut, right? Which was expensive. Okay? It still is expensive. It still is expensive. To get stuff online, it's expensive. And yes, you have all these like Raru and Loot and Take-A-Lot and, you know, you have all these websites that's making online shopping 
more accessible and more affordable and things but growing up as a metalhead where all i wanted to do was represent my love for these bands and when jj's brought out those band t-shirts if i had the money i would have been there i really missed that era of jj's where they had because i mean i, I haven't missed jj's what i haven't had jj's no but remember how it started to change like they started they didn't have like the band shirts and the array of colors and skinny jeans anymore i mean they definitely I mean, perpetrated the scene you know because I have an Edward Scissorhands shirt because yeah, of JJ's. Because of I would JJ. never have it otherwise. Because I personally feel that I don't. I suppose I don't really have. I think like you, I don't really have a problem with these chain stores selling it. Because the only time I would have a problem with something like that is that if the bands themselves were not getting a cut of yeah. profits from that. So like what the Jenner sisters were doing, they did it without permission. Yeah. And they were trying to sell these ridiculous shirts and make a profit off these iconic bands and figures in music. And they didn't ask for permission to, like, they use Ozzy Osbourne and Sharon Osbourne ripped them a new one. That is one woman I would <laughs> you never do not mess with just Sharon no. Osbourne. Like, good lord. Because I was even thinking, like, I don't know if, like, places where we've bought band shirts before, I'm not entirely sure how they get those shirts. So I'm not sure if a cut of the profits is actually going to the bands i don't i don't know what the process is i've never looked into that it. you're buying so you would think that if a chain like h&m or cotton on if they are selling these shirts they, that they legally would have, yeah. they would have had to have gotten the rights to print those shirts well yeah that's where the whole copyright and trademark and yeah exactly that, that's that what i'm saying is like in. you might have a problem with these stores selling it but not at least but i think a it's better access so if you like those bands mm -hmm. you can actually legitimately buy a shirt it's not you have to like hunt it down and b the bands are getting you know a cut of the profits that they should be getting rather than buying some bootleg shirt you know <laughs> like, like you printed yourself with the printers down the road yeah and no, i get you like a lot of people in the scene a lot of diehard metalheads and stuff they'll get angry at the fact that these mainstream stores are selling this stuff and oh they've created it's commercialized and all of that stuff right yes i understand where you're coming from because you are going to get mofos who are wearing a freaking metallica t-shirt and don't know the band and I mean, the whole I've point, seen it. Like, you yeah. see people wearing, like, Metallica crop tops. I'm mm -hmm. like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, anybody could make a crop top out of a Metallica shirt, and you could still know who the band is. That's fine. Just That's just... See, why would you cut them? Anyway. It's like, it's based on an assumption that you're thinking someone with a certain aesthetic is just wearing the shirt. Because mm. now, for some reason, there's this, like, trend going on where people will wear, like, these heavy metal bands. Mm -hmm. Like, they will wear their shirts. The and Jenner like, sisters well, did it. Do you know, like, exactly, like, I think it was Kendall Jenner wearing a Slayer shirt. Yeah. It's like, if she legitimately listens to Slayer, that's fine. The metal community who wear metal band shirts every day. Yeah. Right? That's your that's your look, your, that's your aesthetic. You wear bands because you love them and you want to show people that this is your love and this is your appreciation. Right? It's the same as when Pete, who's wearing a Springbok jersey, has never fucking played for the Springboks in his life, but it's his, it's his life, so he's going to wear a Springbok jersey. Yeah. That's what you do. You wear clothing to represent what you love. And it's super super annoying and super frustrating when you see some person who clearly just based on outside appearances is wearing a shirt of a band they know nothing about and this is a band that you grew up listening to this is a band that gave you solace when you felt like you were all alone in the world you felt like no one understood you and you had this band and you felt like this band was singing straight to your soul i get it i understand the anger but at the same time we're creating this barrier between metal and mainstream and i don't i honestly don't think it should be a thing i just think that for a community that's has come together because everyone feels so isolated i think that they're directing it's misdirected anger if anything yeah. it's it's like you come no together one... because you feel alienated and isolated mm -hmm. and then you create an environment of alienation and isolation if you don't like think if you didn't come by your music in a certain way if you're not didn't come by your band merch in a certain way mm -hmm. like i'm sure there's some people like if you don't order directly off the website then you're yeah. not a real fan or whatever i can see why people would get upset 
about that. Because yeah. also the shirts being an H and M doesn't devalue your experience. It doesn't take that away. It doesn't like take away your love of the band. If anything, yeah. you might get a kid walking through the store, seeing the T-shirt and being like, oh, that's cool, going home, well done, you, you now have a convert. The one, my one friend thanked the teller at H&M because she was like, it's so hard to come by at an accessible price. It's so hard to come by this kind of clothing that suits her lifestyle, that yeah. suits the way she, that she wants to represent herself. And it's so rare to be represented in a mainstream store. And yes, everyone's like, oh, I'm so glad grunge is in this winter. Yeah, I'm going to stock up on all my checkered shirts while I can. Yeah, while you can. From Pick and Pay, which is like the cheapest store. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm waiting for Goth to like come back so Do I can get some I mean? black lace. You know what, Do I, mean? what I mean? And then we're just going to keep it for the next 20 years <laughs> while the rest of y'all are following trends. I honestly think that you should just work with what you got. I will admit that I've had those moments where I've seen somebody wearing a Metallica shirt that from the outside yeah. looks like... They wouldn't really be a fan. I've had those moments of being like in my mm, mind, yeah. being like, "Do you even know? Do you?" But it's like it's but not even a thing of knowing the band. It's knowing the band and the struggle behind the culture. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. You get that spark of like, "Do you know? Do mm. you really understand?" But then there's the other side of it. It's like maybe they do. Maybe they do understand. Because we're older and we're wiser now. We know I mean, better you now. You can't just judge somebody by how they look. They might have the acrylic nails and be totally into Slayer. You never know. All right. So that's it from us today. If you want to catch up with us on social media, you'll find all the links in the description for What the Fluff on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. And you'll find the links to our own personal channels mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. of Wooden Fluff. So if you want to follow our beautiful faces any other time, if you want to catch up on some previous podcasts, you can find it all down below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe, the like, and the little notification bell. Please, we beg you here on the What the Fluff show, and we'll see y'all next time, next week. Yes, at a different parking lot, in a different location, somewhere in the South Peninsula. Yay! <laughs> Cab. Where are we? We're in the Kirsten Ross parking lot because we can't afford to go inside right now. One day we will take you guys in. Maybe we'll have a little bit of like a picnic car. So oh, that'd be and, cute. But for now, we're just going to show you the beautiful parking lot. Ooh, look at the beautiful parking lot. Yeah! Why did you walk all the way down there? It's the park right here. <laughs>